In this video, we're gonna go over the installation process for Grin's new fat all-axle hub motors, both the front and rear hubs that are available. And we're gonna use as our demo bike that we installed this on, a new Kona Wu fat bike frame that we recently acquired. So we're gonna start off with the rear motor and rear fat bike dropouts generally come in four different dropout standards. The most common is 170 millimeter spacing with a standard slotted dropout for quick release or regular threaded nuts. And for that, we have an adapter kit that simply spaces the disc spacer out where it needs to go. There's also larger fat bikes for five inch size tires, and those generally have roughly 190 millimeter spacing. And for that, Grin has an adapter kit that not only extends the disc rotor where it needs to be, but also positions the axle an extra 20 millimeters further outbound. Now the higher end fat bike frames like we see here are using the new through axle standard. It is a 12 millimeter solid axle coming through the side of the dropouts instead of a slot. And that's perfect for a Grin's all axle motor because it's through axle compatible. The equivalent for a four inch tire is a 177 millimeter through axle standard. And for a five inch tire, it's 197 millimeters. And it's a 197 by 12 through axle that's on this bike here. So here's the kit package that comes with the 197 adapter set. We'll start off with the axle extender. So this is the piece that increases the length of the axle from 170 to 190 millimeters effectively. And that simply presses on the end of the existing axle. And this will get held in place by the screws that hold the torque arm on. Next up, we have the disc spacer. So this brings the disc rotor into the right position to align with the disc calipers. And it attaches to the side plate of the motor with a set of bolts that are included of just the right length. These bolts go in the recessed counterboard holes that you see here. And then it presents a new set of disc bolts for securing the disc rotor to the side hub of the shell. So next up, before we install the torque arm, it's important to add the disc rotor. You can either remove the disc rotor on your original wheel or install a brand new one of the same size, totally up to you. Uh, in this case, it's a six inch rotor that we need to match or 160 millimeters. And now this attaches with a standard short M5 disc rotor bolt. Uh, so next up, we're going to install the torque arm. It's important that you install the torque arm after the disc rotor. Otherwise, you'll not be able to get the disc rotor on beyond the torque arm. So the torque arm uh, helps retain the cables and ensures that the cables themselves don't rub against the disc rotor and get damaged. So the torque arm and axle extender are both held in place by these longer screws uh, that go right through the axle extender into the axle itself. This small T9 torque wrench is included with the kit, so you don't have to have that in your toolbox. Now, we included in the kit a small tube of Loctite so that you can put Loctite on all of these bolts. I'm not doing it in this demo installation because we plan on taking this all apart. It's just a temporary build, uh, but we highly recommend using Loctite on all the fasteners involved in the adapter assembly. So that's it for the uh, disc side. If we flip over here, we have the cassette free hub. Now this bike is using a 10 speed cassette. Um, again, we could remove the cassette from the existing wheel and put it on here or get a new cassette with the build, depending on whether you want to keep your other wheel intact. We're just going to install a brand new 10 speed cassette. The spacer on the back of this assembly is because this is a road bike compatible cassette adapter. So it does work for the longer road bike cassette standards. But if you're using a mountain cassette, which is gonna be most common on a fat bike, uh, be sure to leave the spacer on the back of that stack. Otherwise, when you tighten up the cassette lot ring, it's not actually gonna hold things snug. So now all that remains is installing the axle end caps. So if this was a quick release system, we'd be installing the quick release end caps. As a through axle system, we put the through axle end cap on that just pushes over the end of the axle to provide the correct diameter and protrusion. And same thing on the disc rotor side. So now we have here a beautiful through axle rear fat bike hub motor just dying to be installed on the bicycle here. All that remains to be done is very conventional bicycle things, moving the tire and tube over to this rim and then flopping it on the frame. Let's do that.
wheel installed on the bike frame, we now need to secure the torque arm to the frame itself so that all the motor torque gets properly coupled and doesn't risk spinning around. And that's done with the frame clamp hardware. This is a piece of metal bracket that secures to the chain stay with a pair of stainless steel hose clamps and then fully locks this torque arm so it can't rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's just do a dry fit to get this in roughly the right place. So we pre-cut this sleeving in order to protect the paint from getting marred by the metal hose clamp. So some people have made comments that they really don't like the look of hose clamps on a bicycle. They think it's a little bit hideous. Uh, so we've updated the design of our frame clamp attachment to use a much narrower eight millimeter wide hose clamp band. And if you'd install it so that the actual uh, screw section of the hose clamp is behind the stay and then break off the excess length, have the band itself covered in this black shrink tubing, it ends up looking, I think, quite tidy and discreet. So this is an example of how you can make that look. Um, obviously you have shears, that's a slightly faster way to cut it, but eventually any metal will fatigue from bending back and forth. Perfect, look at that. One important detail here is that when we install this frame clamp, it's positioned so that it has quite a bit of sideways motion, both the bolt inside the aluminum piece here and the stainless steel bend are slotted. Uh, and it's really important that the clamp attaches on the same plane of the torque arm. You don't wanna be forcing the torque arm to bend in like that or push out that way, because that bending force will put a lot of extra stress right around the splines that secure it, and there's a high risk of a torque arm failure if you have a large planar force like that. So this screw, it's really important that you secure with Loctite. You really want to ensure that the one bolt that holds the end of that torque arm to the frame has no chance of ever coming loose. Now you notice we did design the clamping mechanism so if this screw was to fall out, the torque arm should be contained by the bent piece of metal. We don't want to be testing that. So double check that everything is nice and snug. And finally, with the torque arm in the right position, we can now at last secure the through axle. I only had hand tight previously. So that all went together pretty smoothly. The 10 speeds all shift into position with no tweaking necessary on the derailleur. Uh, the disc rotor lined up perfectly with the caliper without any disc rubbing. So now we're gonna move on to the front motor installations. So fat bikes have one of two front fork standards. Either it's 135 millimeter spacing with slotted dropouts, or it's a through axle fork, which is 150 millimeters wide with a 15 millimeter through axle. Now most of the early fat bike forks were using that 135 millimeter dropout because it allowed for the interchangeable use of an off the shelf rear hub on the front fork. And that does mean that if you have a fat bike with a slotted dropout front fork, you can use almost any rear hub motor on the market as a motor to install on the front end. But if you have a through axle fat fork, your only real option is our Grin all axle motor. So unlike the rear conversion that needs to use our new fat all axle motor series, the front fat bike gives you one of two motor choices. You can use our new heavy fat motors if you want the most torque possible, but you can also use our standard all axle motor with the fat bike adapter kits, which we make both for the slotted dropout and the through axle dropout. In this case, we're gonna do the installation with our fat all axle motor to make the most powerful two wheel drive monstrosity that we can and show what that process looks like. So the front fat adapter kits also include this axle extender to increase the length of the axle. So that goes on first and as with the rear kit, it also is held in place by the torque arm screws. Uh, in this case, the torque arm should be installed so that it comes out in the opposite direction of the cable. So I will mount the torque arm pointing more or less in the other direction. And here's where you have to pay a little bit of attention to the screw links that come in your adapter kit. You'll find that there are two countersunk M3 screws, um, two sets of six, and one of them is gonna be five millimeters longer than the other set. And so it's important when you install these screws that you put the longer screws in the side through the torque arm and the shorter screws in the hole that just goes into the axle extender. So if you get them wrong, it'll be kind of obvious like that. You'll see that was a short screw in the wrong hole and it sunk all the way down, so. And that's what happens if I have the long screw in the wrong hole. 
So once again, we include a small tube of removable Loctite and we recommend putting a bit of Loctite on all 12 of the screws that go in here just to be extra sure that those screws will never come loose. So we're gonna switch around to the disc side of the motor. Now the adapter kits come with two possibilities for the disc rotor spacers. There's a two millimeter spacer and a five millimeter spacer. And depending on your particular fat bike fork, you're either gonna need just the two millimeter spacer or the two and the five stacked together. And that's because there's a bit of a legacy difference on the alignment of the disc rotor to the end of the axle for these front fat bike forks, whether that adopted a 10 millimeter standard like most front forks always had, or the 15 millimeter standard that existed for rear hubs, which got used in the early days of fat front forks. On this particular fork, just eyeballing, I can see that looks to be about a 10 millimeter offset. So I'll put both spacers together underneath the disc rotor itself. And when you use both spacers, you will need, of course, slightly longer disc rotor bolts. And we include a set of six uh, longer length M5 bolts to use when you have the full set like that. And now all that remains is inserting the two end caps. In this case, it's the through axle end caps. Um, and with a quick release slotted dropout, those would be the QR end caps and this hub should now drop in flawlessly into this fork. And look at that. Uh, so one thing that you want to check before you spin the wheel like I just did there, is just make sure that the cable exit is not rubbing against the disc rotor or rotor bolts. Now the cable exit is protected by a metal sleeve over the axle, but some forks that might have a really wide diameter at the through axle point might force the cable up like this. And in that case, you might find it just nicking the heads of the bolts. Uh, the bolts that we include are low profile to minimize that, but you might need to replace those with some button head bolts or use cable ties or something to pull that wire just to make sure that it clears. Now in this case, it clears just fine. As I spin that, I can see I'm close, but I'm not making any contact to the actual wire and we won't have to worry about cable chafing. That's also why you don't want to align it with the cable pointing up into the fork, because if you immediately bend on the inside of the fork, almost for sure you'll be rubbing the bolt heads against the cable. So we want the cable coming out from the underside. So the front torque arm is secured to the front fork blade with the frame clamp exactly the same as we did on the rear. So the rest of that installation, I'm not going to repeat myself and we'll blitz through the exact same sequence anchoring this. Reminder again that you want to have Loctite, especially on this M5 bolt that holds the torque arm to the clamp. So there you've seen both a rear installation and a front installation of a fat motor on a fat bike. In this case, it was a fully through axle fat bike, um, but the same process more or less with slotted dropouts. And you see how broadly painless of an installation that is. Now these fat motors have higher power than the standard all axle motors. Normally you wouldn't be doing both a front and a rear motor of this power on the same bike. But if you are after the most powerful beast of a machine, this here would be the way to do it. Uh, we obviously did not install the motor controllers, the batteries, the rest of the kit. Uh, that will be the focus of another video tutorial where we go over dual motor drive systems and how to install it. And this will be a perfect platform to show the electrification of two motors with one control system. So stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.